Hello and welcome to another Lightboard video. My name is Bhavin Shah and I'm a Senior Technical Marketing Manager with the Portworks Business Unit or the Cloud Native Business Unit at Pure Storage. In this video, we are going to be talking about how Portworks can help you build disaster recovery solutions for your Kubernetes clusters. Before we look at the architecture level details between your primary and secondary sites, we do want to cover a few terms to make this video a bit easier to consume. So let's start by talking about a few acronyms that you come across whenever you're talking about disaster recovery solutions. The first one being recovery point objective or RPO. So RPO basically means it's the amount of data loss an organization can suffer when and if they get hit by a disaster event. So in simple terms, RPO basically means data loss. So for mission critical applications, for tier one applications, you might not want any data loss. You don't want to lose any of your customer data. So for those applications, you might have a requirement of zero RPO. And that's what we look at when we are talking about building synchronous disaster recovery solutions. The second term that you usually come across is RTO or recovery time objective. So recovery time objective is the amount of time it takes for an admin to bring all the applications back online. And there might be a different order in which applications are being brought online. So you might bring your mission critical applications first or your tier, tier one applications first, and then you move on to the lower priority or tier two and tier three applications. So RTO or recovery time objective is just the amount of downtime your applications have uh, whenever a disaster event happens. So when, when we are talking about building these disaster recovery solutions, there are a couple of different models you can follow. The first one is synchronous DR or synchronous disaster recovery solution. This is where you have a requirement of zero RPO and you have an RTO requirement of maybe a few seconds. So this allows an organization to have a DR solution, a sync DR solutions, where there is no data loss. So even if a disaster happens and your primary site or your primary cluster goes down, you can still bring all your applications online on the secondary site almost immediately without losing any data. We have another way of doing things, which is called asynchronous disaster recovery solution. And this is used for building that uh, highly available region, cross region architectures for your Kubernetes clusters. So you might have a data center or a cloud region on the East Coast, and you are using something on, let's say in Texas, or a secondary uh, region in on the West Coast of the US. So these kind of architectures means that you have a higher network latency between the two sites. Because of that, you might be using 15 minutes as your RPO, and then still a few seconds to a couple of minutes for RTO. So that's the difference between synchronous and asynchronous disaster recovery solutions. Before we talk about how Portworx helps you build these solutions, let's talk about three different terms that we'll use through this video. The first one being cluster pair. Cluster pair is a trust relationship between our primary and our secondary Kubernetes clusters. So which helps you in case of a disaster event, take all the application resources and application data that was running on the primary side and bring them online on the secondary side. So cluster object is nothing but a trust relationship or trust object. Then we have schedule policy and schedule policy. Let's let's talk about schedule policy in terms of async disaster recovery. Here we saw that we need an, an RPO of 15 minutes. How do we tell Portworks that we have an RPO requirement of 15 minutes? We do that by using a schedule policy object. So this basically translates to whatever my RPO is and uh, helps me tell my Portworks uh, deployment on a Kubernetes cluster to copy all the objects from primary to secondary site. And the way we bring everything together is using a migration schedule object. So migration schedule object is a simple YAML file that you deploy on your primary Kubernetes cluster and you, attach, and you map your cluster pair object, your schedule policy, the resources that you want to move from your primary to secondary. So migration schedule is the thing that brings everything together. It takes the schedule policy into account and at every schedule policy or whenever it's triggered, so let's say I have an RPO of 15 minutes, Every 15 minutes, a migration schedule basically uh, creates a migration object which moves my application between the two clusters. So now let's talk about how we can build a synchronous disaster recovery solution using two Kubernetes clusters on site A and site B. To build this uh, disaster recovery solution, what we'll do is we'll create 
a stretched portwox storage cluster. So you have a stretched portwox cluster across site A and site B. So two different Kubernetes clusters, but one single portwox storage cluster. And then you have a witness node that helps you maintain quorum or, ident or be the deciding factor when a split brain scenario happens or when your primary site goes down. So you have your Kubernetes cluster, you have your portwox resource, and then you have a namespace where you're deploying all your Kubernetes objects. So this can be pods, this, these can be deployment objects, secrets, config maps, service objects. So this is what a Kubernetes application looks like, right? It has all of these different components. And in addition to this, it also has a persistent volume. So a persistent volume is basically where an, your application will store all of its data, or that, that's where it will store or persist all of the data. In case of a sync DR or a stretched cl portwox cluster scenario, any write that comes in on the primary site basically gets copied over to the secondary site before the write is acknowledged back to my application. So this means that any, any IO that comes in gets transferred to the secondary site before it's committed back. And this means that if, I'm, if my primary site goes down, I always have a copy of my data on the secondary site. Because of the way Portwox disaster recovery solution works, I will, always, uh, I will also have all the different deployment objects, the secrets, the service objects, the config maps, everything ready to go on the secondary side. So basically all my storage is handled by the stretched Portwox cluster and all my Kubernetes objects are controlled by my migration schedule and my schedule policy. So zero RPO from a data perspective, but I'll still use a 15 minute or a 30 minute a schedule policy for all my Kubernetes resources because they don't change that frequently. So let's say now a disaster strikes and my primary cluster goes away. At this point, I can just use a simple command called stalk CTL activate migrations to fail over my applications from the primary to the secondary site. This means that the application pod that was missing on the secondary site now comes online. It mounts the persistent volume and my application is back online. So as an administrator, I didn't have to worry about what my DR plan looks like. Then I have to find the backups that might, I might have at an offsite location. All I needed to do is log into my secondary Kubernetes cluster, run a simple command and bring my applications online almost instantaneously. So that's how you can achieve synchronous disaster recovery with zero RPO and a few seconds of RTO. Next scenario that we'll talk about is an asynchronous disaster recovery solution. In this case, we still have a couple of Kubernetes clusters primary and secondary, but instead of a stretched Portwox cluster, both of these Kubernetes cluster have their own Portwox storage cluster. And then I have my cluster pair object. I create a migration schedule, things that we already spoke about earlier in the demo. And then I have my application. And this app will still have all the different resources, so Kubernetes pods, deployments, secrets, services, config maps, and so on and so forth. At this point, what, what happens is when I create that migration schedule object, it takes the schedule policy into account. So if I want a 15 minute RPO, it takes that into account and copies not uh, all my Kubernetes resources, but also my persistent volumes incrementally and moves them over to the secondary site. So in this case, I'll still have all my deployment objects, my secrets, my services, my config maps, ready to go. As soon as a disaster strikes, and I again run the same command, stork ctl activate migrations on my secondary site, is when the Kubernetes pod will be deployed, the persistent volume gets mounted, and after a disaster recovery, even my applications, applications come online on the secondary site. So that's how asynchronous disaster recovery solutions with Portwox works, and it helps you build that cross-region, cross-availability zone architectures use for your applications that are running on Kubernetes. So that's a quick overview of how Portwox disaster recovery works for your Kubernetes clusters. If you want to learn more about uh, Portwox disaster recovery, check out some of the other videos that we have on our YouTube channel. Thank you so much.